howdy folks, it's Monday. <laughs> and we've got a new tool in from our friends at Vivor. And this time we're looking at their bandsaw. And there's some interesting features, interesting price. It's, it's gonna be an interesting show, I hope. Yeah, so let's check out Vivor's bandsaw, yeah. Yeah, so Viva has a number of different bandsaws and different models, different powers and whatever. So this particular one right here, uh, you can get it in either configuration as a bench top model, or you can get it with the stand. They call this a the 10 inch throat size, this particular model here. And it's, it's really a great sale price right now. And I think as a bandsaw, if you're thinking about a bandsaw and you've been shopping around and looking and you know, humming and awing, and, uh, you know, that thing's a lot of money. Uh, this is on sale and it's a great price. So I think this is well worth looking at from Vivor. Oh, yes. Now, one of the first features you want to look at is this one here is all metal. There's, there's no plastic on the bodies here. So it's kind of like an industrial feeling machine. It's kind of nice. Speed on band size, I noticed the price, you know, blah, 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 you know, it goes up. And so I was really impressed with the price because the price was kind of like, wait, wait a minute, are you sure this is two speed? And it is, it is a two speed bandsaw. In fact, the speed has changed down here on the pulleys with the uh, driving pulley down below. Let's take a quick look at the, the guts here. Yeah, yeah, the, the operating guts. There you go. Big, big, two big wheel job. And the blade itself is, it's shown on the diagram here as being a uh, 72 and 1 8. I converted it to US, you know. So a 72 inch blade, which is a very common size and fairly inexpensive to buy, you could get a hold of a 72 inch blade. You could, you know, get it on here kind of thing. And you've got lots of adjustment here. Viva rates this as uh, for wood, plastic, and aluminum. So that's an interesting combination. A lot of the bandsaws out there, a lot of them are just wood and there's no aluminum or you know metal of any kind to get, that's supposed to go through them. So I was surprised to see the aluminum on that list, which makes me wonder maybe with the right blade, you know, if you've got an aftermarket blade that's for metal, you might be able to get away with some mild steel going through or something. I personally, I like to keep my tools in good shape, so I don't think I would do that, but I will, I will be cutting aluminum on this. And the other thing was uh, I wanted to mention, I gotta show you guys, I'm gonna turn this around for a minute. I just, you gotta see the motor on the back of this bandsaw, okay? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there it is. Look at the motor we got back here. <laughs> I'll bet that's got a lot of torque because physically the body of the motor is quite large. Looks like, uh, I'm gonna say an alloy aluminum bodied or something, but that is definitely a motor that's for a serious bandsaw. Matter of fact, while we're on the back side, uh, this is the adjustment here for the table. So you can unlock the table and you can turn it to you know 45 degrees and it's got like a little slide here. So you can just you know tilt the table up and down, and you have a little zero right here where you can lock it in and uh, tighten this back up nice. And you've got a nice flat table surface to work off of. Another small minor feature, but it also has this little LED light which you can turn on and off to you know see the the cut better that you're working with. The on and off or start and stop switch. This is you just sort of push up and lift this like this, and you've got your start and stop. But also. When you let go, it's just like that. Now, if you slap it, it will automatically stop the saw. So it's like an emergency uh, slap switch kind of idea. Just gonna do a quick working height too because uh, different metal stands on some of these saws are kind of actually low when you get them home or something. But Okay, the plate right here measures off the floor about 41, well, 41 and a half inches almost roughly, okay. So that's, uh, that's a good working height. This is probably the only, uh, I guess we'll call it negative part of this whole thing, but uh, this stop bolt right here, this is when you put it down, it'll hit the top of the machine here and it, the plate should be, you know, theoretically should have been level. It was not. And when I tried to adjust it, I found out I didn't have any adjustment for what I needed to get this, you know, perfect. I actually ended up taking the bolt and grinding off about, uh, I'm gonna say about eh, maybe a 16th of an inch, maybe a little more off the bolt with the lock nut and then putting it all back together so that I've got, when I put the plate down, or the table down, excuse me, when I put the table down, it now is perfectly 90 degree to the blade. That was something that uh, was a little, I guess you could say a little thrown off by that, but, and I'm not sure, 
Some people might take that bolt out because you can go past the 45 both ways. Yeah, the table will actually do that if you take that bolt out of the way. Now, right out of the box, I checked the bearings back here and the setting for the band saw itself with the blade to where it tracks on the wheels. Everything was good, everything checked out fine. So I think at this point, we just go ahead and start her up for the first time and run a piece of, just run a piece of lumber through it to see how it does. And also it'll give you guys uh, a chance to hear the saw when it's running. Yeah, it's quiet right now. That's just some flooring, but you can see how quick that went through. And it, uh, yeah, did a nice job on that. Probably cut circles and everything, although this is a thick blade. This blade is, uh, it looks like it came with a blade that's about, yeah, it's a 3 8 blade. Oh heck, why not, right? Just for fun. Well, there you go. <laughs> I made a bit of a circle. <laughs> Not bad, considering. <laughs> yeah. When you get this table saw, Beaver includes uh, the two wrenches that you're going to need. It's a 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and a little Allen key, of course, for doing your settings and your bearing adjustments and stuff. Technically, this is all you need. I use the socket set, of course, to put things together quickly, but this will get you through putting everything together, and that's the only two tools you need. And again, I'd say that's pretty darn good. Uh, another item that comes with the saw is this uh, push stick, which, you know, I'm not big on push sticks, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice one. Also, this little hook came with it, which there was nothing in the instructions about it. And it screws into the back side here so you can hang your push stick uh, with your saw. The next uh, thing we're going to do is just uh, I'll bring this over, the fence over, and lock it in. And I'm just going to cut a little off of this piece of uh, scrap plywood and just run it through the saw and see how uh, straight we track. We're, we may not get a good one because band saws are funny that way. If you push a little too hard, they'll, the blade will start running off on you. So we'll, we'll see how we do with it. That's an old hard piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood, but uh, as you see, she tracked straight through all the way. Wow, that's uh, that's just good. I think if you set your bandsaw up, you should be able to get that cut anyways. But yeah, that was, that's impressive. Speaking of adjustments, tracking on the wheels for the bandsaw is done through this right here. This is unlocked right now, but you can unlock this and turn this in or out in order to get the saw bladed track on your wheels. And that's kind of important because you really need to get that done on any band saw. Also the tensioner is right up here and that's kind of obvious too. Again, unlock it and then you can raise or lower the tension a little bit on the blade. The, the blade is just, everything's just factory set. So I really don't know where we're at with that because I didn't touch that, but I've already made some cuts and uh, got some sawdust all over everything here. So yeah, doing good. Now this wouldn't be complete without cutting plastic, so I've got some uh, PLA off a 3D printer and I just want to run it through the band socks. I need a 45 cut across here and I thought it would be interesting to see uh, how that works. In fact, that would be the wrong way. Let's cut it, let's cut something really crazy on this thing and just see, you know, what that does. Because uh, PLA, hmm. But it's plastic, so let's see how she does. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it was going to be a big tough job on that. I just was, I've never cut PLA with a bandsaw, so I thought, eh, something new. Let's try it. And it looks like we got a nice 45 angle cut there. In fact, I'll even uh, take it one step stupid further, I guess. It's kind of ridiculous, but yeah, there, there it is. And look at that. It's like, oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that real well, but uh, that's a 
perfect 45. And I hope you're waiting for this. I'm gonna show you a little something, I upgraded a little bit. I did something else besides modifying this bolt and shortening it down a little bit so I could get this plate to be absolute zero at, you know, give me a perfect 90 to the blade. The saw's unplugged, okay, so don't, yeah, don't, don't, nothing, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I did. The rubber feet that come with the stand uh, really don't wanna stay on, and I hate that. And everything I've got around here, the rubber feet seem to fall off. So I generally, what I do is I'll just drill a hole and put a, drive a small screw through, and I'll show you what I did with this one. Yeah, here we are. This is the bottom of the feet. These little rubber caps are really nice, but they don't like to stay onto the metal, and everything I've ever had always seems to do that. So I drilled a, a little hole and drove a metal screw through uh, each of the feet and put this little flat screw through here just to help keep the feet on so I don't have to have to find a foot in the garage one day and wonder where'd that come from you like, no this way they're they're screwed on and they're attached as we're finishing up here uh, I will provide a link in the description below where you'll find a you can go get this baby nailed and you'll find it for a great price oh yeah and you need to take a good hard look at it because the features the build you know for the price oh yeah this is definitely a winner so and again, it's from my favorite tool company, Vivor, which says right here, oh yeah, tough tools, half the price. Yep, tough tools at half the price. Wow, okay. So here we go. Uh, comment below, which one would you keep? You know, the Craftsman or the Vivor? But uh, personally, uh, my vote goes for the Vivor. Yeah, the stand is uh, actually a really good stand. The motor's good and strong and it seems to be a really good bandsaw and a great price. It's also two speed, like I was pointing out. Uh, the old craftsman here, she's a, just a one speed. You know, she just, just, that's it, you know. And it's, it's, she's already gone through a lot of parts. In fact, the, uh, the rubber for the wheels on this thing, I forget what I paid, but it was about, I think it was about $50 or something. It was expensive at the time. And there was some other upgrade models, modifications that I had to make with it. But uh, over time, it has really been, it's been a good saw. But, you know, I think it's, uh, I think there's a, it's time for a nice shiny new one. Yeah. Hey, thank you for watching Coffee and Tools so much. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. We've got a contest coming up Thursday. We're giving something away. And I guess, what, next Thursday, I guess probably giving something else away. Cool. Yes. I'm out of here. <laughs> over and out.